Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And right now it is 8.58. It is, ooh, 49 degrees. Much different than the last couple of days. And it's not going to warm up too much today. It's going to be kind of a dreary, cold day today. Good day to have some soup. Well, Justin will talk about that in just a second. But first, you know, they used to say, I guess they still do, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. But these days, apparently, a picture is worth a lot of retweets and a lot of likes and a lot of comments on Facebook and whatnot. This and is a cuteness yeah. alert for our viewers right now. So cuteness alert, cuteness alert. Look at look this. <laughs> All right, so this adorable pair began their friendship while well, roommates, the Mia Foundation, which is a nonprofit yeah. rescue for animals with birth defects in Hilton, New York. Now, the uh, dog is a chihuahua named Lundy. Eight week old, yes, unable to use his back legs. And then I like this Herman. <laughs> Herman is a pigeon it's unable a pigeon. to fly because he probably has a brain injury. So, Sue Rogers, who runs the organization with Gary Rogers, told the, atlet, the, uh, the newspaper that she was tending to Herman and Lundy when she decided just to put them both together in a dog bed and then snap some cute pics. Yeah, she put them on Facebook and social media. So here we go. They've been viewed more than 6 million times, 20,000 reactions, 18,000 comments, and 44,000 shares. She was shocked by it. And the, car, the majority of the comments about this, of course, they just loved it. People went crazy over this. Everybody says they're just cute, cute, cute. And One person said, OMG, yeah. so bloody cute. Oh, so bloody cute. And kind of the, uh, one of the, one of the uh, I guess, the positive things that came from all these pictures, mm -hmm. $6,000 in donations. And $6,000 in donations. So you and you can see why they're so cute. Yeah. Another person put on their OMG with the heart emoji. And then other people were like, Morph look, oh, the video. I didn't yeah. see the video, I only saw the pictures. Oh, yeah. Rolling. They I are did. little BFFs. <laughs> Aw, Lundy and Herman. I love that. In a dog Herman. bed. They're so cute. Anyway, hopefully that put a smile on your face on this kind of dreary day. Yeah, it did. Yeah, let's take a look at your rundown. The number of cases of the coronavirus are still climbing. Just this morning, authorities in Iran have confirmed the first two cases of the virus in their country. The World Health Organization says it could take at least a year to find a vaccine. President Trump's clemency spree, pardoning and shortening the sentences of nearly a dozen people, including former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. Meanwhile, records show the family of another man pardoned by the president who owns a construction company has donated $200,000 to Trump's campaign. Attorney General William Barr has discussed possibly resigning if President Donald Trump continues to tweet about the Justice Department's credible investigation. That's according to ABC News. SAPD called out to the 7100 New Laredo Highway where a man and his son got into an argument. According to police, during the fight, the son pulled out a machete and cut his father's hand. Help me. Okay, you can breathe. Easy. Frantic moments in Switzerland. That's one of two women rescued after being buried by an avalanche. A snowboarder and her friends kept her calm. There were three people in this blue pickup trying to break into the ATM. They said they saw them with the chain pulling that ATM off its base. They also used a crowbar to get inside. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan may lose another title as they break away from their royal duties. A source tells ABC News the Queen may not allow the couple to use the Sussex Royal branding. Yesterday was the first day of early voting and Bear County says more than 8,000 people showed up at the polls. The presidential race, the sheriff's race and several propositions are on the ballot. Oreo cookies are in the news, but these are no regular Oreos. They cost $8 for just three of them. <laughs> but they're red. It's a marketing stock from the clothing brand Supreme. German researchers say using your smartphone too much can make your brain's gray matter actually disappear. Doctors say drug abuse has the same effect. Are you addicted? Of course I am. All right. My brain's small. We all are. <laughs> Uh -huh. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know uh -huh. what they're saying. What are they? Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, yeah. See, that's why I stay off my phone. I have limited brain power. That's why? I don't need, I don't need to be listening. That's why you stay off your phone? Power. I don't believe you. I think you just get frustrated because you hate all that social media stuff no, that I make yeah. you do. That's, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> so. But I still got brain power. You sure about that? Limited. <laughs> I got some. Don't, no, Justin, wow. don't, 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 don't. Speaking don't, of gray don't. matter, look at this picture. <laughs> now that is wow. a good transition. <laughs> I'm impressed by that. That, that is was pretty uh, good. That's pretty amazing. I'll give Leslie credit for that one. Thank you. That's very good. <laughs> yeah, uh, cloudy skies right now, and we do have a little bit of drizzle coming down. 
I think the big story today is going to be the, the sort of the, the blustery winds, the wind chill right now, 44 degrees here in San Antonio, 52 is what it feels like in Hondo. The wind chills are in the 30s there in Rock Springs, so it's, it's chilly and somewhat damp. We're going to see a high of only 52 degrees today uh, with the cloudy skies hanging on, and that will continue into tomorrow, by the way. Let's look at the radar, and you'll see where some of the shower activity is. If you're looking for some heavier pockets of rain, you'll find that around Gonzales and then up along I-10 and then also north into the hill country. Most of what we're seeing here in San Antonio is very, very light, just sort of the drizzly stuff, but pretty good downpour starting to move into Gonzales at this hour. No lightning strikes, but you'll get moderate to perhaps heavy rain at times. Temperatures, as I mentioned, only up around 52 for a high. That's it, 60% chance of showers. Winds pick up even more so tomorrow. We'll talk about that, and we got to look ahead to the weekend. Maybe some sun mixed in there. We'll talk about it in just a few minutes. Guys? Yeah, those wet roads caused a lot of accidents early this morning. Right now, we're for Tim Harry words, but accidents. Excellence. Excellent. Is that what I said? Excellent. Uh huh. It's a new word. I'm so worried about I that like gray it. matter thing. <laughs> so roads look pretty good right now, though. Top stories that we're following for you today. We now know the name of a man killed overnight during a rollover crash on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police identify him as 21-year-old Abdullah Algarabi. Now, police tell us the man was driving a black Mustang at a high rate of speed on Camp Bullis Road just after 11 last night when he lost control and then hit two trees. The car went airborne, rolled into the parking lot of Lutheran High School, and that's where it crashed into a parked SUV. Now, police say witnesses helped pull the man out of the car, but when EMS arrived, he was pronounced dead at the scene. No one else was injured in that crash. This morning, San Antonio ISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez giving the annual State of the District address. Martinez is expected to address business and community members, sharing the successes and the challenges the district has had over the past year. Since the last State of the District address, SAISD earned a B rating from the state of Texas. Now, the event started at 8 this morning at the Pearl Stable. Our Sarah Costa is there and will give us an update coming up on the news at noon. And this afternoon, Connect SA officials are expected to present their recommendations and funding possibilities to City Council. The staff will give more details on 25 projects they want the city to start by 2025. Connect SA is an initiative that focuses on transportation as a means of opportunity here in our city. Some of the proposed projects include fixing sidewalks, creating more trails, creating a more robust public transportation system, and limiting traffic congestion as the city continues to grow. Connect SA says all of the projects will cost $1.36 billion over the next five years. Garrett Berger will be covering this presentation today, so be sure to look for the latest in our later newscasts, and as always, on KSAT.com. Let's turn to your morning headlines. Now the jury in the New York sexual assault trial of Harvey Weinstein has yet to reach a verdict. They deliberated for about five hours yesterday and they are, they're expected to return this morning. The former movie producer is charged with first degree criminal sexual act, two counts of rape and two counts of predatory sexual assault. Some of the charges are structured as either or counts. So Weinstein can only be convicted of two charges at most. The 67-year-old has pleaded not guilty. His defense attorneys argued that the sexual encounters referenced in the charges were consensual. Well, crime never stops, not even for date night. Yeah, two married police officers in Kentucky were enjoying dinner at their favorite restaurant when they had to jump into action to stop a crime. Chase and Nicole McCowan have been married for about six months. Their date night at Raising Cane's was interrupted when a masked man walked up to the register, flashed a gun, and demanded cash. That's when the police power couple took matters into their own hands. Well, I can only see his face and then the employee, and then I saw her hands go up like this. I'm like, is he doing what I think he's doing? And he's like, yeah. There was literally no question. We just looked at each other. Is this what's going on? Let's go. A couple drew their weapons and started chasing a suspect who dropped his gun as he ran out the door. The officers held the suspect at gunpoint until police arrived. The couple says they're keeping their fingers crossed that the next date night won't come with such a big helping of adrenaline. We've got a scam alert for you this morning from the Better Business Bureau. The BBB says that scammers can now use voice cloning software to make you believe you're talking to someone you know. The technology mimics voices from audio samples. From there, scammers will create voicemail messages to convince you to send them money. Yeah, the nonprofit says the scam may hit businesses first, but they don't expect it to stop there. They say scammers could mimic candidates' voices to steal donations. Unbelievable. It's always something. Yeah, you know your voice is out there a lot. I know. Yours, too. Pay attention. Yours, too. Uh, scary. If I'm asking you for money, it's not me. <laughs> you sure?
Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 907 and 49 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, Port SA is always looking towards the future, which is why they're investing in San Antonio youth. Max Massey visits the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology and shows us how getting kids interested in science now could have important implications for the future of the Alamo City. And how smart is your dog? A pooch in Toronto is putting all other dogs to shame after a video of him playing Connect Four went viral. The story coming up later on in the newscast. How cute is that? <laughs> Hall of Fame at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo has grown exponentially over the years. After the break, Alicia Badetta introduces us to the new inductees for this year. And checking the stock market as we head to break, actually up right now this morning, 61 points. Still over 29,000, that's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, it is now 9-12, and a pool of over 6,000 volunteers that help run the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Two people have been recognized this year for their commitment and years-long service to the organization. Mark Hola and the late Anella Egbert are the 2020 inductees of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Hall of Fame. Alisa Barrera visited the rodeo fairgrounds to learn more about the impact this year's inductees have had on our local rodeo history. Gracing the Hall of Fame inductee display case this year are Anella Egbert and Mark Cola, committed volunteers who in their own way have helped make the rodeo what it is today. I didn't feel worthy because this is not about one person. And um, although I'm humbled and, and, and it's helped me to practice grace, um, it just, uh, it, it was tough and it's still a little tough. Anella Egbert passed away in 2017, but who can forget a cowgirl with grace and fashion who along with the predecessors in the Hall of Fame put in countless hours to uphold the mission of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. I actually didn't put two and two together until right before the induction and it was kind of moving because I watched her from afar and I always admired what she got done and she was everywhere. And through the years, volunteers have also watched Mark Cola from afar. There's some pictures there, wow, from when they dedicated a horse sale in my honor, but also some pictures of when I was younger doing the horse sales. It's his love for horses that brought him to the rodeo grounds 30 years ago. I love to watch horses. I'm not a big horse rider, um, but I do love horses and I love the people around horses. In that time, he has worn many hats as volunteer leadership. Vice chairman of the horse show committee, chairman of the horse show committee, uh, became a assistant vice president, um, then became a, a, a lifetime vice president, served a term on the executive committee. Roles that have been instrumental in the growth and development of the organization. Um, this is a shovel from the groundbreaking and a hard hat from the expo hall, which is where the horse stuff is done. When we built that building, uh, we worked uh, we worked tirelessly. Although now the Hall of Famer says it's time to step back and let other volunteers lead the way to raise funds for students, he'll always come back to the grounds that have been his driving force. Will you continue to volunteer? You bet. <clears throat> Till I die. Here at the Hall of Fame, an outstanding history of dedication and contribution to make this rodeo what it is today. And here you can have, you can find the past presidents, the grand champion steers, also the, the scholarship recipients because more than $210 million have been available to these students. And then over here in this corner, this is where you'll find the Hall of Fame inductees. Again, Mark Cola and Anella Egbert. So a big big thing for both of these people, for their families, for all they've done for the rodeo and especially for the students. So it's a really neat thing to walk here. If you haven't been, take the time. There's so much history, so many artifacts, even the badges all the way to the 1950s. It's really, really amazing. Well, and what an honor. That's such a great thing. Thank you so much, Alicia. Yeah, there's some great Thank stuff in there. And they actually moved the Hall of Fame kind of in the center. Yeah. So it's right around where the food court is, where we all know where that is. And then some well, of the other you. shops and stuff. So you, you kind of have to walk through it if you want to take a shortcut to get to the AT&T Center for the show. So you walk through there and you stop and you start looking at all. I'm going to do that Saturday. There's some, there's some fantastic history of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. So if you're ever going through there, just, just stop. Stop and take a look. Give yourself a couple extra minutes and just look around. It goes amazing. back a long way, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, these last couple of days of the rodeo aren't looking too great. Not great. Uh, 
you know, a little damp, a little cold out there. We may see some sun on Friday, so there's some encouraging news there. But today it's cloudy, it's cool, it's breezy too. The winds have been pretty gusty. Let's look at the radar and you see where the shower activity is. Generally, I've, we're talking about measurable rain here, generally off to the north, up around Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Rock Springs, we're seeing some showers and then a nice little shower working in around Gonzales. And we're seeing some moderate rain with that and some of our eastern counties getting in on some of that rain. We are still seeing a little bit of drizzle here in San Antonio, so it's still going to be somewhat damp. It's just not the uh, moderate rain that we're talking about here over towards Nixon and uh, Gonzales there along Highway 183 and along Highway 90 there where we're seeing some of those yellows and oranges. A little closer look here in Bear County. Again, things generally quiet at the moment. Uh, cloudy skies, a little bit of drizzle, 49 degrees, dew point at 45. Northeasterly winds at 13. Wind chill is at 44. That number is not going to change much today, so uh, Jack will be with you all day long. Here's the setup. Uh, we've got the, the frontal boundary that moved through yesterday, and we've got the overrunning pattern. And when we see this, we typically have the flow out of the southwest to loft, and it just keeps the clouds in place. It keeps things cool, and it just keeps a little bit of rain in the forecast, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at looking at today and tomorrow. Uh, temperature wise where the skies have cleared a little bit up to the north. Uh, they're dropping down into the low 30s here around Lubbock. Clouds help to keep temperatures up overnight, but they also keep temperatures down during the day. Uh, so uh, we won't see much of a rise in temperatures from uh, where we are right now. 49 degrees in San Antonio, 46 Kerrville, 54 Catula, 51 right now in Kennedy. And look at the 24 hour temperature change. We're down 20 degrees from where we were just 24 hours ago shows you the impact of that cold front. It was pretty significant when it hit, picked up the winds, did uh, stir up a few showers too. Right now winds are anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour, so that's why we have those wind chills out there. Feels like 44 again here in town, 44 in Kerrville. Feels like 39 right now in Rock Springs. Wind gust forecast, winds are actually going to pick up as we go into tomorrow. We're going to get a secondary surge of colder air, and that'll kick the winds up even higher. So we'll see gusts up around 20 miles per hour today. They drop off a little bit tonight, but as we get into tomorrow, I think we'll see an increase in wind speeds. It's going to be almost downright windy by tomorrow afternoon, gusting to 34, 35 miles per hour in some cases. Uh, Futurecast shows that uh, we'll get a couple showers as we go throughout the afternoon, and then as we get into tomorrow morning, here comes that secondary surge of cooler air. Now, I don't think we're going to see just a whole lot of shower activity tomorrow, but it stays cloudy, and with that wind, it's just going to feel pretty chilly out there. By Friday, though, we could start to see some of that clearing that I talked about, which would boost those temperatures up into the, the mid 50s. And then by Saturday, we're talking 58, mostly cloudy. Another chance showers early on Sunday, a little storm system moves through. And uh, once that passes by, we should see some pretty nice temperatures Monday and Tuesday back in the low 70s for highs. Wow's up. Smorgies board. Well, at least the last couple of days of the rodeo, they will be able to salvage some of that weather. Yeah, I think so. And it, it does warm up some. So. Thanks. Yep. You like that big word, didn't you? Smorgasbord. You guys are full He's of very proud vocabulary of this morning. I know. <laughs> Good job, David. Gold star. All right. Ooh, about time we got one of those. Hey, still ahead on GMSA at 9, the San Antonio Museum. What, I'm over here? <laughs> the Museum of Science and Technology at Port SA is hoping to inspire future generations. Max Massey shows us why getting kids interested now could have important implications for the future of San Antonio. We're always looking to the future. Port San Antonio generates over $5 billion in annual economic activity in our region. The campus is always looking towards the future, and in many cases, that's the youth and talent of tomorrow. In today's KSAT Kids segment, Max Massey gives us an inside look at the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology at Port SA and tells us what it aims to bring to our future leaders. Tesla coils, the first personal computer and real-time cyber threats from across the globe. This is the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology. How to a lot of like decode like hackers like make sure they don't go on any other websites that they shouldn't be on. 
Owen is only 12 years old, but he already has an idea of what he wants to do when he grows up. I want to go like to the NFL or I want to be a computer scientist. Owen and his Edgewood ISD classmates are just a few of the 20,000 students who have walked through these doors. Because it's a, a vehicle for children and young adults to take a look at science and technology, become inspired, and perhaps decide to have a career in, the, in those fields. One of the coolest parts of the museum is seeing the evolution of technology. Take a look right here. That's actually relaying messages to the printer. But fun fact, the phone that you may be carrying in your pocket, like this one, is actually billions of times faster. So when students walk in here, that's one of the biggest appeals of knowing that they could be part of the future of technology. Goal is really inspiration. They'll have a chance here to see things they've never seen before. They'll, they'll have a chance to hear about the history of science and technology from the past up to the present. And, and inspire them to look toward the future. And getting them interested now could have huge, important implications for the future of the Alamo City. What we lack today is the cyber talent pool um, for my particular industry. And so um, Port San Antonio brings together um, the greatest minds of all industry partners, as well as the Department of Defense, Air Force, intelligence community to make sure that we are working together um, to develop um, our future. And maybe students here today, like Owen, will be part of that future talent pool. I learned about like how this can like help me like in pursuing my dreams. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And if you're interested in checking out the museum at Port SA, it's free every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we have more on KSAT.com. And there are big expansion plans on the way for the museum and the exhibits. The plan is to open a new facility on the campus by fall of 2021. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's neat. That is neat. Your time now is 925. Lots more ahead on GMSA at 9. Undergoing brain surgery can be a pretty traumatic experience. So the thought of being awake while it happens, pretty scary. My doctors had a woman play the violin during her own surgery. And for the first time since joining the race for president, Mike Bloomberg will join five of his Democratic opponents on the debate stage in Las Vegas tonight. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live with a preview. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads. Still some moisture out there, so be careful if you headed out. We had a lot of wrecks early this morning. Looks like everything's cleared up and running smooth, so let's keep it that way. We got another one of yours in this one. I see a little trouble with that one leg kind of loose in there. However, I'm pleasant. Five years old, young lady. Hey, that was a pretty good handstand, you know that. That added on two points. Look at here. So adorable. <laughs> she was dancing and waving. She had a good time. So that's all so that cute. Hurt. No, they're tough. Yeah, no. Little they're... Wranglers. Yeah, they are. <laughs> hey, you only have a few days left to visit the San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo and see some more mutton busting. What are the exhibits we're checking out? The San Antonio Zoo's animal exhibit. Alicia Barrera is live at the Rodeo Fairgrounds with a look inside. Hi again, and we love your hat, by the way. Yes. Very nice. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Well, look, let me show you where I'm at. We're at the San Antonio Zoo exhibit. This is really cool. So if you, your kid, uh, your family loves animals, this is the place to be. This is the red kangaroo. But I'll be honest, I don't know much about the animals here, so that's why we're speaking to Mr. Leo. He's an animal specialist for the San Antonio Zoo. What can you tell us about these red kangaroos that we see here? Well, they're often referred to as the great kangaroos. Uh, we do two have uh, we do have two here, uh, Irwin and Crikey, uh, oh. ten months, yeah, ten months and uh, eighteen months. And then over on this side, we're going to make our way across the hall over here. There are some fast fellows over here. <laughs> you said their names were Speedy and Gonzalez. Right. <laughs> they Af believe that you guys. <laughs> African spur tortoises uh, are referred to as sulcatas also. We'll uh, show them over here. Yeah. We'll make our way. Sorry, we're making our way around over here. What can you tell us about these fellows well, here? They are from Africa. Uh, they're third largest behind uh, Aldabras and Galapagos. And they do live a very long time. Yeah. All right. And then last but not least, we have a military okay. macaw. All right. So they're often uh, re we're called military because of the look like they're wearing a military uniform. Uh, so, so they have that olive green body and red feathers on its feet. 
and that's why they refer to it, right? Like right. military uniform. And this is Frankie, and he's, uh, I believe, 14 years old. So. Frankie. And they have a particular call, right? It's a loud screech. <laughs> they do have a couple of different calls. Well, we haven't heard Frankie speak this morning, so we're hoping <laughs> yeah, later he, on today. He kind of has a limited vocabulary, but he will let you know he's there. All right. Well, you guys, this is some that you can meet Leo here. Um, some of the things that you can do at the San Antonio uh, Stock Show in Rodeo. Of course, just a few days left, but this San Antonio Sioux exhibit, definitely a place that you want to bring your family and kids to enjoy. Back to you. Let's Rodeo San Antonio. Hey, Alicia, where, where is the zoo portion? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give us where an idea. That? Give us an idea where we can go see it. Oh, my gosh. Right before I went live, they're asking where exactly this exhibit is. So it's west of the Freeman Coliseum, right behind the Frontier Club, so where the old Hall of Fame used to be. So that's where you can find this neat exhibit. But there were the that old was like Hall a of good Fame. quiz. And what time, did you mention what time it's open? What time is it open? Uh, I believe it opens at 10. And then it goes on till? 9. 9. Here we go. All right, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Perfect. Can your, who's your photographer? Steven is my photographer. Steven, ask Steven to pan over to the turtles again. I just want to see if they moved. Oh, they did. They want to see slow. the turtles again over here. Yeah, see? Hadn't moved. They're <laughs> Speedy and Gonzalez, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and Speedy moved. and Gonzalez, my goodness. Alicia, thank Look you so They're much. They're moving. Good Looks guys. like a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you, guys. Like hanging out. Like, this, they probably did move. That was it. Well, well you notice they're under that heat lamp and yeah. they're enjoying the warmth because as we take a look outside with live cam, you kind of need a heat lamp. Yeah. It's a little bit chilly out there. I need a heat lamp at my desk. Sit there and just, uh, yeah, bask in the warmth because it is chilly. I mean, it's not just like bitterly cold, but it's it's chilly out there. 50 degrees right now. We've got a few showers uh, that are tracking through South Texas. Nothing here in San Antonio. Most of what we've seen has been pretty light, but there are some showers, uh, especially east of town. We're seeing that around Gonzales, back down towards Nixon and Carn City. A few showers with some moderate rain there, and this is trying to back build a little bit towards San Antonio, so we may see a couple of light showers a little bit later this morning. A lot of cloud cover, though. That much we do know, and that's going to keep uh, temperatures on the cool side today. We're sitting at 50, so we didn't go up a degree from where we were at the top of the hour. 47 Holotus, 45 Bernie Stage, 47 in Comfort, 48 Bolverde. There's a little bit of wind there, so there's a wind chill to deal with too. As you might imagine, mold jumped up, jumped up today in the pollen count. It's up to 1980. Uh, Juniper ash, elm, all low, and uh, mold may stay on the high side considering we have uh, some more damp weather today. 52 degrees. By 4 o'clock, we'll put in a 60% chance of rain. Winds breeze you out of the north 10 to 15 miles per hour. Stays cold tomorrow, too, but there is a warm-up on the way. Maybe some showers, maybe uh, even some thunderstorms down the line. We'll talk more about uh, that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Guys? All right, checking the roadways at 935. There's 35 at Ben Zinkelman. The camera seems to be stopping and going a little bit, but cars are all moving smoothly, so that's the good news. Trending stories this morning. It sounds like something out of a medical television drama, but awake brain surgery is actually a real thing. It happens more often than you think, and it happened in London at King's College Hospital. A woman played the violin while doctors removed a tumor from her brain. The approach was taken to make sure the surgery didn't impact her ability to play music. Awake brain surgery has become a common tool used by neurosurgeons in order to preserve a patient's brain function. The woman's brain tumor was successfully removed without impairing her musical talent. She should be able to return to her chair at the Isle of White Symphony Orchestra very soon. That's amazing. Wow, that is incredible. Hey, talk about a small world. A New Jersey nurse recently reunited with an old patient while treating that patient's newborn son. Lisa McGowan is a nurse with the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at a children's hospital in New Jersey. She's been taking care of Zane Caldwell since he was admitted to NICU. It turns out she also took care of Zane's father, David, when he was a newborn more than three decades ago. Caldwell and his fiance showed the nurse a photo as proof. The couple then took a photo with McGowan, cradling Zane, recreating the old image. Wow. Uh, that's, that's cool I mean. stuff. I like that. Yeah. A dog in Toronto is putting all other dogs to shame after a video of him playing Connect Four went viral. The video was uploaded to Instagram earlier this month and it shows a cockapoo named Percy playing a round of the game with his owner. The dog picks up the game pieces, drops them into the game's grid. Well, as impressive as this is, Percy's owner admits the dog is not actually good at the strategic game. He likes to play anyway, so she just cheers him on. I think that's so cute. 
Do you have to be good? Apparently not. It's not. Not if you're a dog. All right, but. this next story is just typical and hilarious. People are losing sleep over, over sleep. Over losing sleep. So apparently there's a lot of sleep gadgets. You can take yep. measurements on how well you sleep, and so you try to get you try to get all these gadgets together, and you try to get you a high score, mm -hmm. make sure you're sleeping for your seven or eight hours. But or then nine you start stressing out if you're not getting the sleep number that you wanted because it manages. So let's start well, with first of all, there's actually a name for this condition. Yes. It is called orthosomnia. <laughs> all right. It's when you become really fixated on having this perfect sleep via a tracker, and then you start worrying about it, and you wind up giving yourself insomnia. Okay, because there's a lot of gadgets. They measure how you breathe, how fast your heart is beating, mm -hmm. how much you're tossing and turning. They crunch the data, and then they produce a sleep score, usually through a smartphone app. Well, course. for some people, perfecting that sleep score becomes an end unto itself, so much so they lose sleep over it. <laughs> so the person who did this study said outpatients complain that they are aiming for a sleep score of 100, but they're only getting an 80. So that keeps them up at night. So what do you think they tell them to do? Put your tracker away for a couple of weeks. Sometimes you can just see the relief in their faces saying, I don't have to track my sleep. No, you don't have to track your sleep. But a third of Americans say they don't get the recommended seven hours of sleep at night that they do need. And so it is important to get your sleep because it affects a lot of portions of your health from your heart and lots of other things. So it's important to get a good night's sleep, but don't stress about how much of it? I think sometimes technology kind of takes over. Uh -huh. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you probably feel like you got a good night's sleep or you, you know, didn't feel like a good night's sleep. And I think that's pretty much the, your indicator is how you feel when you get up. Oh, it's you don't need all that technology. Separate kind of thing, but getting up in the morning, uh -huh. for me, uh -huh. how you wake up is a very big deal and how tired you are for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. My husband found the most fantastic alarm clock. Really? Yes, it Ooh. starts off with a little bit of light, just very little. And there's music that's very, very soft. And then the light gets a little bit brighter, and really the music gets just a little bit louder. What kind and of music it, is it? Country, you know me, I like my new country oh, yeah, music. Yeah. But it, it's a gentle wake up call. And so it's not like, and it's not, wow, all that stuff. <laughs> so I think that's just kind of the same thing with falling asleep. You need something to gently get you to sleep, like gentle. a noise machine or something like that. So you don't like play like the ocean? I would do that kind of stuff to go to sleep, not to wake up. Not to wake up. Because I would sleep right through that. So if somebody just ran in the room and go, ah, get up, wait, wait. I'd punch him in the face. <laughs> well, then I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's probably smart. 939, 50 degrees. <laughs> You're watching GMSA at 9. The top six Democratic presidential candidates will have a chance to appeal <coughs> to Nevada voters tonight ahead of Saturday's caucus. Joining them for the first time in the debate stage tonight, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live with a preview of what we can expect. Six Democratic presidential candidates on the debate stage tonight in Nevada. Yeah, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg qualifying for the debate at the very last minute, likely making him the target of a lot of attacks from other candidates. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live in Las Vegas with a preview of what we can expect tonight. Good morning. Uh -oh. Okay. oh, we're going to run her story because right now her live shot's frozen. Three days before the Nevada caucuses, Democratic presidential hopefuls facing off in Las Vegas. Now we're here in Nevada, and it's going to be up to you to decide how many of us move on. What I'm going to do as a candidate is use every minute and every day that remains to find voters. I want to beat Donald Trump, and I need your help to do it. Ahead of the debate, Bernie Sanders leading in national polls and well-positioned in Nevada, having the largest operation in the field. We got thousands and thousands and thousands of people knocking on doors. Making the phone calls. That is how you win an election. But for the first time, Sanders and the others will have to share the stage with former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. If you share my belief for opportunity for all, then welcome to Bloomberg 2020. Bloomberg will likely be challenged on policy and the money he's spending on the campaign as his competitors try to get under his skin. I don't think that when people look at Donald Trump, they automatically say, hmm, can we get someone richer? But although all eyes seem to be on the former New York City mayor, it's high stakes for the rest as they try to gain momentum and convince voters in Nevada before they go out to caucus.
Apparently, I, the I, shot is still frozen. Yeah. And they must be having their own weather issues with yeah, in, something going on. Could be. Is it Nevada or Nevada? It's Nevada, Nevada. apparently, and they get very they get testy. So my apologies to anyone viewing who is from Nevada. That's why. That's why we just say Las Vegas. We don't even worry about saying no. Nevada. Or Nevada, or Nevada. Mm -hmm. Now you're just gonna make them more mad. Well, it's like I'm from Lafayette, and people say Lafayette. I'm like, it's just Lafayette. Like, yeah. ha ha ha, Lafayette. It's a good way to remember it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. And people who can't say mouton, I say, it's like a crouton on a futon. Mouton. Mouton. No, it's just mouton. Okay. Like a crouton on a futon. Okay, let's talk that. about. The <laughs> We're going down a rabbit hole, man. I like it. Um, wow. We've got some showers out there. It's chilly. It's cold. It's windy. Feels like February again. It oh, it does. does. It's a good uh, day to be home. It is. Uh, what does uh, Mike say? Tomato soup, grilled cheese day? Grilled cheese yeah. and tomato soup. Yeah, let's do it. Hey, let's take a look back at weather and history. Uh, weather Which, history. Justin, tomato soup is nothing like ketchup. Okay. This is this debate oh, is, is that another day. debate too that I missed? Yeah. Did I miss yeah. that one? It went on. He said it's the same thing. He thinks tomato soup and ketchup are the, the same, same thing. thing. It's not like you pour ketchup in a bottle and, or in a bowl and eat it. That's what I said. Yeah. Okay, it's all yours now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could. Yeah, we digress. Okay, let's go back to 2017, guys. Today is the uh, three-year anniversary a taste test of, of taste test. the uh, tornadoes in San Antonio. If you remember that, did a lot of damage around Elmo Heights or Linda Drive. You remember that around the quarry? Uh, this was just three years ago that we had the EF2 tornado and another EF1 in Northern Hills area. So uh, that was a rare event for February to get tornadoes like that. So it shows you we can't see severe weather or we can see cold stuff like what we're seeing today. Cloudy skies, drizzly, wet, windy. Uh, we've got a few showers up there across the hill country, Junction, Fredericksburg, and then another little batch here, Gonzales, back down towards the Lavernia area, Floresville. And this is sort of back building a little bit, so we can see a few showers here in San Antonio. So far, we haven't seen a whole lot. We've had some showers earlier. Most of the roads, though, are starting to dry out some. Still, I think we can see a little bit of drizzle and we'll have the potential for some showers through the day today. Reason for that, we have that cold front pass by. We've got the perfect overrunning situation in place. We've got the moisture overriding that cool air at the surface, and that typically generates some light showers and cloudy skies. 50 degrees right now. Dew point is at 46. North northeast chilly winds at about 10. No wind chill because we jumped up uh, to 50. 50 or above, typically you don't have the wind chills. So uh, where we do have uh, wind chills up in the hill country, 47 Comfort, 45 Bernie Stage, 46 in Kerrville. And then as uh, we zoom out, generally 40s and 50s to the south. And then you got mid 40s as you go north into the hills. And the winds, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. They're not terribly strong, but there's enough there to make it feel just a little chillier out there with wind chills in the low 40s in Fredericksburg. It feels like 46 in Kerrville. Winds are going to stay up in that range 10 to 15 miles per hour, maybe gusting to 20. These are wind gusts, by the way. And those gusts come down a little bit tonight, but as we get into tomorrow, that's tomorrow morning and then midday tomorrow, we're going to see stronger winds on Thursday because we'll get a secondary surge of cooler air. So be prepared for a windy day on your Thursday, and that will keep wind chills in place in a lot of spots. Uh, future cast shows a couple more showers today. Not a whole lot of rain tomorrow, but it stays cloudy. And uh, with that drier air moving in behind that secondary surge, we should start to see the clouds erode a little bit on Friday. And maybe the sun pops out and temperatures will come back up. Today, though, staying in the low 50s, 52 for high. Decent chances for showers. Northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wow. And uh, Camera. 54 on Friday. I, I just nearly had a serious head injury there. 58 <laughs> on Saturday, 69 Sunday with a 30% chance of rain. I Cameras are robotic and they swing around. Yeah, they just swing with, around with sometimes. No notice. And he was walking behind it and it went whoop down. I'm kind of like a ninja, though, I got to tell you. You did. Cat, you cat like quickness right there. Mm -hmm. It's good. But yeah. next time, if you walk a little further on that side, you won't. Uh, yeah. Or just walk this side. That would make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9 40. We have, where have we gone today? I don't know. We just ketchup and I've tomato been soup. I'm using my phone too much, apparently. Apparently you didn't get enough sleep last night. You didn't check your little gadget and see what kind of sleep you got. 949, 50 degrees. I don't have one. We'll be right back. We'll get you one. We'll get you a <laughs>
Boeing announced they have discovered foreign object debris in the fuel tanks of several 737 MAX planes that the manufacturer has in storage. The company says they plan to investigate the debris and that this new discovery will not delay the plane's return to service. The Boeing 737 MAX has been grounded since last March after it was involved in two fatal crashes. Meanwhile, Jeff Bezos has taken the heat from climate activists who are calling him a hypocrite. This after he announced that he would donate $10 billion of his own money to fight climate change. Bezos said yesterday in an Instagram post that global warming is, quote, the biggest threat to our planet. Now, activists remain skeptical of Bezos due to Amazon's negative environmental track record. One campaigner told Business Insider that it's, quote, hypocritical to announce that climate change is the biggest threat to our planet, while at the same time boosting the fossil fuel industry. And more leadership changes are happening over at Nike. The sportswear giant announced on Monday that they've hired a new chief operation officer and a new chief financial officer, both from within the company. Andy Campion, the company's current VP and CFO, will become the COO, and Matthew Friend, its current CFO of operating segments, will become the new full-time CFO. This comes just four months after the company announced a new CEO. And that's your Cheddar Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Checking the roadways once again, 10 at Callahan, no problems. Doesn't look like there's any rain actually falling in this area as we're showing now, but the roads still look like they could be damp. Maybe a little bit damp, and we, we still could see a few more showers today, so we'll call for some drizzle light rain, but the, the big story is going to be cloudy, cold, breezy, 52, 50 tomorrow. I think it uh, gets even breezier, if not windy tomorrow, 40% chance of showers, mainly early in the day, things dry out later, and then the sun should pop out at least a little bit on Friday boosting those temperatures back in the mid 50s. Now the cuteness alert. Here we go. So if you're interested in adopting adopting a cat, mm -hmm. there's one in Floresville. His name is Thor. He's, a, he's a fluffy a Texas cat. kitty who loves long walks. <laughs> he's up for adoption. Uh -huh. Look at this little cutie patootie. But you're going to need a big thick brush cuz fluffy has some serious <laughs> no. They, they this is their words. Fluffiness can get kind of gnarly. Well, that makes sense. Uh, Thor weighs 13 pounds. 13 pounds. Does well with other pets and has a totally chill to everybody. So he's a Get totally him. cool cat. Yeah, and he needs cool a cat. home. He's looking for a forever home and someone, as you said, that can handle his fluffiness. Um, it's this is the Wilson County No Kill Animal Shelter, by the way. So if you are interested, you can contact the Wilson County No Kill Animal Shelter. Tell them that you are interested in Thor, the cool cat. Thor. You need to handle his gnarly fluffiness, and you need to be able to handle his appetite, apparently. He's a hungry cat. At 13. But he's in shape, he's in shape for today because yeah. of the cold. It's See? nice and he's warm. He's got a good warm coat. Got a yeah. good vacuum cleaner. You'll be good to go. There you go. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you back here for KZ12 News at noon. Have a great Wednesday.